What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that needs a Warzone buddy, the more vulgar the better. Also be good at the game, add me on PlayStation XX, Fuzzy Turd XX, and let's get our gaming on. Also, Nebu Obasai asked me what my favorite starter Pokemon was, and to answer that question, it is Charmander. Uh, because Charizard is my favorite Pokemon, because I'm basic, and also, he's the best anyway. If y'all have any questions you want to ask me, just go ahead and ask them in the comments, and I'll answer them if they're cool. If they're not cool, I'm not discriminating, I just won't remember them. But even if I was discriminating, what would you do? Prove it? <laughs> Alright, this story's called, Karen Pulls a Reversal. Not my story, one for my fiance. Happened early today. Couldn't think of a better sub to put this on, so feel free to let me know if it's too horribly placed. Okay, she was at the Walmart in our town, doing some shopping. I'm not a big fan of heading into stores right now, and it has never bothered her. I'm way more nervous about the Brona, sue me. On her way in, she got stopped at the door. This isn't particularly odd, given the current state of things. The policy for this Walmart, or all of them, not sure, is that not too many people should be in the store at a time, and that makes perfect sense. Most people, customers and employees alike, are wearing their face masks and gloves, so generally the environment seems quite clean. After waiting for only a few moments, she was let in. The store was slightly crowded despite the attempts of keeping a low population, but my wife had decided that there was one item she wanted more than anything, anything else. Sugar-free pudding. Not for me, that crap makes my stomach turn. Wading through the less crowded aisles, she made her way into what she thought was the pudding aisle. But, alas, a horrific lack of glucoseless, savory, soft sweets were seemingly absent. So, only slightly deterred, the rest of the grocery shopping took place. Detergent, paper towels, hot pockets, mm, and food in general came. For a while after getting literally all the other groceries, she tried to find another aisle for pudding, one that didn't exist, so she made her way back to where she had started this journey. And there she was, atop a pedestal in front of all that delicious, desirable pudding. Karen. She was tall, blonde hair pulled back into a ponytail. She seemed older, not the typical age of a Karen, but one could be forgiven for a slight moment of mistaken assumption that she was an employee. She stood atop a metal stepping ladder that had a cart attached to the front with a myriad of boxes of stock, waiting to be introduced to their shelves. However, something caught my fiancé's eye. The boxes were full of baking supplies, flour, baking soda, the whole nine yards, all of which belonged on the other side of the store. This, this cart and ladder combo wasn't even supposed to be in this aisle, and there was no other employee in uniform nearby, so she clearly didn't work at the store, unless Walmart had introduced some kind of plain clothes division. She had her ungloved hands reaching all the way back into the shelf of probiotics, a shelf that, given the woman's height, this stepladder wasn't technically needed. She even had her face only a few inches away from the product without a mask on, trying to read whatever she thought was on those bottles. My fiancé, ever the non-confrontational woman she is, kept her mouth shut and simply watched the woman take the probiotics out, look at them, put one on the stocking cart, put every other one back, and continue to fondle the probiotics like she was coming on to them. And then, the horrifying moment struck. Her eyes searched around and landed on my fiancé. I don't work here! She scoffed dismissively, then turned back to continue her ministrations, which left fiancé baffled, trying her best not to look like she needed anything. She didn't mind waiting for whatever this Karen was up to, as the pudding she wanted so desperately was gonna be there by the time she was done getting to know the bottles of probiotics. After another minute or so of waiting, the woman turned again with a loud huff, knowing that the pesky nervous shopper was still standing there awkwardly. Do you need something? I don't work here! My fiancé finally squeaked out a little, I don't mind waiting, which dragged another sigh out of the woman. 
Ah, unbelievable. If you have a problem, learn to ask someone who works here next time. She stomped, stomped, stomped her feet down the three metal steps onto the floor of the aisle and pushed the cart forward with such a ferocity that the orange aisle marker, if you frequent the store, you certainly know, fell to the ground with a clap. The fall had been enough to bust the corner off of the sign, but the Karen had her sights locked, not on the broken property, the carnage laying at her feet, but instead at my fiancé. With the speed and fear of a mouse, my fiancé finally obtained that half-liquid, half-solid gold she had been wanting so desperately. The sugar-free pudding. Like she was holding the holy grail and a boulder was about to roll her over. My fiancé dipped out of the aisle, stepping over the broken piece of sign in the process, and fled the scene. Before she could get too far, she heard the last of the woman's whinging, more maskless huffing and puffing, along with another set of stomp, stomp, stomps, to surely start fondling the probiotics once again. But oh, no, 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 this isn't where it ends. As my fiancé was at the self-checkout, slowly bagging her groceries to make sure she had as few bags as possible, another horrid incident with this woman began. Now, to set the stage, let me be frank. My wife has a peculiar way of handling herself in public. She always had her head down, fiddling with a fidget cube in one hand and stacking groceries with the other. To the untrained eye, she looked far less independent than she really is. As the Karen wound up finally deciding what probiotic she wanted, she came around the self-checking area with only that single bottle. Whatever half-liquid, half-solid gold she had, good for her. Now, the self-checkout lines have a generally short length, evenly spread out across most of the little area that they're in, with only one person to take care of any malfunctions or bagging errors. Short-staffed, likely. The Karen, bottle in hand, upon seeing my fiancé once again, practically beeline to the assistant. My fiancé has a massive baby face issue going on, so the next thing she heard wasn't surprising. Excuse me, this little kid needs someone to help them. Do you know that I had to help her in the back because you want staffed enough? I should be getting paid for this at this point. She loudly protested, a hair flip going along with her tirade. Oh, uh... The assistant, clearly caught off guard, asked, Is that your daughter? Ah, no! If she was, I would be even more upset with how little help you have here. So do you mind? Before the assistant could come and help my socially inept fiancé, she managed to let out a... Uh, sorry, I don't need any help before practically breaking the joystick off her cube in a mortified moment of fidgeting. Ah, you sure? The Karen roared out, less like a lion and more like a boar. Because you sure took plenty of time just standing there and waiting for me to help you. Do I look like an employee here, hmm? She gestured to the floral short sleeve shirt she was wearing. At this point, the self-checkout assistant seemed to somewhat understand what was going on and tried to redirect the wild animal's rage. Ma'am, if you'd like, I can talk to my supervisor about getting you some coupons for your help. Tactful. Upon hearing that she'd finally be paid for all the work she did, she let out one final relaxing sigh. <sighs> yes, that'd be wonderful. She folded her arms, a bottle of probiotics sloshing again in her hands. Gosh, I'm so sorry. All this, uh, all this virus stuff just has me so worried right now. She emphasized this with a sniffle, rubbing her nose against the side of her hand. Yeah, real worried. Regardless of whether or not the Karen got her precious coupons, my poor wife-to-be decided that she didn't want to stick around for the festivities. Quickly finishing up her bagging, and not nearly as compact as she'd like, she made her way out of the store after paying the terminal. In fact, the fact that she had three bags filled up two-thirds, and not two fully filled bags, is what she was most upset about upon getting home. 
really puts things into perspective. First off, I'd like to say good job to OP's fiance. It's obvious she has some kind of anxiety going on there. And she went to one of the worst places for people with anxiety, which is Walmart. <laughs> and it, it's funny because it's honestly true because you can run into some seriously messed up people there. I like to call them wall Martians because just the people you see there, they could be from another freaking planet, such as Mars or Wall Mars. <laughs> All right, this story is called I Helped My Grandma, so I must work here. Hi everyone, thanks for all the support on my previous post in the subreddit, but as of right now, I gotta post this one on mobile blah blah. So this happened to me about September last year. I was wearing a light blue button up shirt, jeans, and formal black slip on shoes, and I was with my grandma, an amazing old lady who would do anything for anyone and never want anything in return other than for the person to pay it forward. I've grown up my whole life following those words. So I'm at the local supermarket with my elderly grandma doing some shopping, walking through the store, just grabbing bits and bats, anything we need. Obviously talking to her through the store, helping put things into the cart, grabbing stuff from the tops of shelves that she can't reach, you know, the kind of thing that anyone would do. And it was at this point on, hell would drop a Karen right in front of me. From this point on, I'm me, grandma's grandma karen is karen store employee is store employee Ooh, i was thinking about doing some cookies for us to share and enjoy would you like that i should note my grandma is very well aware of everything she has full motor skills and is actually a very good baker even now you'll never see her not doing something like gardening baking sewing knitting grandma like things i guess uh, yeah, sure, we can do that. Just tell me what you need. I'll be quick and grab it while you wait here. So Grandma lists off everything I need to grab and stands at the end of the aisle, waiting. I run off, grabbing a few items, showing her from down the aisle to confirm the brand or the type she wants, when the clearing of the throat sounded behind me. I turned around, slightly having a quick glance. It was nobody, just someone actually clearing their throat. I was safe. Then, the ill-fated tap on my shoulder. I turned around, hoping it's not what I think it is. Excuse me, when you're done waving the items around in the air, can you give me them? Crap. Uh, sorry, no. I'm buying these for myself and my grandma, but I can quickly grab you some from the top if you can't reach them yourself. You... You're buying them for yourself? That's very selfish of you, buying items while on the clock, so unprofessional, and from a manager no less. She looks me up and down, seeing my clothes. I, I'm not a man. She cuts me off, snatching a box out of my hand. Shut up and give me them now. I'm going to call your corporate office for this. She pauses, looking at the box. I don't want this brand, give me the other! Lady, I don't even work here. Give me that back, I'm buying it myself like I told you. My grandma at this point has walked away and found an actual employee, pointing Karen out while she continues on her rampage of calling corporate and getting me written up, even fired when store employee walks up. Ma'am, what seems to be the problem here? Your manager is buying items while on the clock! I want corporate's number. You deserve better than him, young man. Lady, listen to what I've told you a dozen times already. I don't work here. Karen just screeches, shut up. She hits me with the box, bursting it open, making the produce fall out onto the floor. I grab the Karen's wrist, not hard, just enough to keep her still. What the hell, lady? Store employee radios in the incident to security. Yeah, we've got a crazy lady hitting another customer with items from the shelves. I'm not crazy, you bastard! And unhand me, you monster! Let me go, you're hurting me! She swings at me again, catching me on my cheek. That's when my grandma comes over. <laughs> you don't mess with grandma's grandson. I let Karen go, and then... Listen here, you ungrateful stuck of bimbo! You do not hit my grandson, ever! Karen goes to swing at my grandma, screaming her head off so loud you could actually hear dogs howling from miles away. 
When I grab her arm, along with a security guard who had made her way over, who told me to let go, took the Karen's other arm and pinned her down. The store employee took me and my grandma away from it all, taking us to the front of the store, constantly apologizing while laughing and joking with us about that slap from my grandma. Police arrived and questioned us about what had happened. Once it was all cleared up, the actual manager appeared. Not only got his staff to grab everything for us both, but allowed us to have it for free. An amazing guy. We refused several times, but he wouldn't allow us to actually pay. Not 10 minutes later, Karen was dragged out of the store in handcuffs. There was a bunch of little conversations that happened, but I don't remember what was said too well, so I left it out. I went back to the store two days later and saw the same store employee, asked him what actually happened with her. As far as he knew, she was an apparent reoffender of the same thing. And to his knowledge, she was still in a prison cell. I've since found out that she ended up doing a thousand hours of community service and had to pay 250 pounds in fines as well. That's a satisfying end for me, I do say. I made a typo at the end there. I meant to put just 100 hours of community service, not a thousand. Sorry for that. Okay, th that's fine and all. Everyone makes a mistake, but why wouldn't you just edit the, the actual mistake instead of... Never mind. Interesting story, nonetheless, with an interesting Karen who's got some issues, and I'm glad she was arrested because not enough of them do get arrested for full-on assault, or attempted assault, aggravated assault even. She used a weapon. This story's called, How I Met the Nicest Old Lady. So this happened about five years ago, and I decided to post this as two weeks ago, she had passed away. It was like a chunk of my life pulled from me and thrown away. It reminded me of how we first met. This will be quite a short story though. So about five years ago, I was dropping off my mom and dad at the airport as it was their 50th anniversary, and about a minute after dropping them off, an old lady opened my car door and gave me her address. I was slightly confused at first, but then I realized she thought I was a taxi. There were no taxi signs on my car, nor was I near any taxi area. I told her I am not a taxi and she apologized and was about to leave, but I told her I could drive her home free of charge. The drive was about one hour from Southampton Airport to where she lived, and on the way, we talked about how our families were doing. It was sad hearing about how little family she had left. It was only her daughter and her grandson, and most of the time, she was all alone with no one to talk to. I decided to give her my phone number and told her to call me anytime she wanted to. She thanked me once she got home and entered her house as it was quite late. I went home and went to bed as I was tired, and for the next five years, we met up, talked, and called each other. But it was when she started not picking up, I started getting worried. I got a call from her daughter that she had passed away, and I was devastated. She was in her bed, and she died in her sleep. After her death, the only person I could talk to was myself. My parents are at home, and I don't live with anyone, so I was stuck at that point. I wrote this story as more of a remembrance than anything else, and to let my feelings out. I hope this wasn't too depressing for anyone. That is the end. No, that was a very lovely story, and very sad too. Oh god, that was really sad. Um, well, uh, rest in peace, old lady. You will be missed by OP, by me, and by the commenters on this video who are all saying, rest in peace, old lady, you will be missed in the comments below. And I'm right, right guys? Don't make me look like an idiot, I do that enough to myself. Okay, rest in peace old lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.